He's happy. Hmm? He's happy. I'm me? Yeah. I'm happy. You look happy today. Do I? <laughs> yeah. I am happy. It's just not enough time until Christmas to do everything we need to do. Oh. Yeah, too short. So, are you recording by the way? Yeah, you began. Oh, you are? Oh, you've already <laughs> begun. Okay, right, welcome back to another video. Today, I'm gonna be making a Christmas pudding. Now, I know everyone's gonna say, you've done it too late, well, that's true. Apparently you are meant to make these things months in advance and let them mature. But then I have seen people make them on the internet and they eat them straight away once they've been cooked. So, why not? I'm gonna make one. But today I'm gonna to be making not just an ordinary Christmas pudding, I'm gonna be making like the king of Christmas puddings. This is going to be the Christmas pudding. Yeah, okay, no. <laughs> <laughs> so this is gonna be the Christmas pudding. I've got an antique jelly mold or cake mold. I'm not exactly sure what it is. It's quite big for a jelly mold. Billy bought this. TT, calm down. Um, Billy bought this and he's kindly lent it to me to make the Christmas pudding. We do have a Christmas pudding already, but it's a little small one and it's in like a plastic pot and it, you know, it tastes good, but it's not gonna look very impressive on the table. Just imagine a Christmas pudding like that, flambéed with like brandy, we set it light and then you can put some holly and some berries on the top to decorate it. Have it with brandy cream or custard. What I did yesterday is I got all of the fruit. So there's sultanas, currants and raisins chopped apple and lots of brandy and rum. Actually, it's not brandy, it is Armagnac, which is a kind of brandy, but it's not made in the cognac region. Um, so I'm gonna be using that. We also oh, have- it smells. It smells Do you smell the day. alcohol? Uh, so I've also got cognac from Ile de Ray. Yeah? No. Yeah? Where you worked in the summer yeah. as a lifeguard. Actually, it's not mine, I borrowed it from the chateau, but I'm, I've only used a little bit. So, and also I've got rum. So I didn't realize, I thought it was just brandy or cognac you went to soak the fruit in, but actually you're meant to put rum with it. So yesterday, me and Florian, we went to uh, like a wine, or alcohol, it's like a cav. Yeah. Yeah, like a place where you buy fancy alcohol. And I bought this because I absolutely just fell in love with it. It's called the Demon Share Rum from Panama. And the, the tagline on the, on, the, uh, on the bottle, this is brilliant. If the angels will have their share, so too will the demons. Just thought it was fun. Just uh, make sure you already taste it. Yeah, I had a glass last night. It's actually really nice. Did you want, do you want to smell it? Uh, maybe after. Smell it. And I asked- Oh, you want to the... taste? Yeah, you S taste. Let's smell yesterday. it though. It's, it's sweet. Yeah? It's Not nice, isn't strong. it? It smells like caramel and vanilla. And I asked to the guy that I met this um, summary, he knows, um, he knows the one, you know, Demon yeah. Share, but not this bottle. Oh, okay. Because he, uh, I said you, he has a page on a- uh, Oh, your, your friend who's like an expert oh. in rum. Like, yes. Yeah. Expert. <laughs> so- We will taste after? Yeah, we can taste it if you want, but um, I just need to get the ingredients mixed together into the mold and then the thing is, it won't, you won't see it in this video because uh, it has to steam for, well, basically the recipe is meant to be steamed for four hours, but I've doubled it. So it might have to cook for about six hours, steamed for six hours, maybe seven. So you'll see the reveal of the uh, Christmas pudding tomorrow. But obviously I can't eat it because it's for Christmas day. So, mm. um, but we're gonna make it today anyway. And today's also the solstice. In exactly one hour and 15 minutes, the sun will apparently stand still in the sky. Uh, and that is the furthest point it's gonna get from the Northern Hemisphere. And then from, from five o'clock onwards, the days will start to get longer again. It's at 5 p.m. Yeah, so today is the official start of Yuletide, which is the old tradition, which was before the Christian celebration of Christmas. Oh, hello. Oh, hello. <laughs> What's going on in here then? We're filming a video. Oh, right, sorry. Did I disturb you? No. You're welcome in here. Right, so we are, I found the copper polish. Oh, good. Yeah, it was in the chateau. Right, so I'm going to polish your copper jelly mould. Yeah. And then I'm going to mix the ingredients together. And it's got to steam for seven hours. Wow. So, yeah. Right, I'll give you back the camera. So basically, before I do any cooking, 
I've actually got to clean and polish the, the mold, but I've also, I've got something else to polish, but I won't polish it just yet. I'm gonna to have to show you this because it's it was amazing. I was so surprised when I opened the package yesterday. So this is the antique copper chocolate pot. I said I was gonna make a hot chocolate the traditional way in another video, like a long time ago, um, but I needed a special tool, like a stirrer to actually stir it the traditional way. So yesterday I received this in the post and I was really shocked. Uh, and this is actually from Steve and Joanne Murray. Steve is um, a wood turner and he actually made this for me. Uh, and I'll show you how it works. Basically, you're meant to put your chocolate in, milk, mm -hmm. heat it on the stove. And to stir it, you put it in and you do that. And that stirs the chocolate. That's the traditional way. Okay. And I couldn't do it because I didn't have this. Uh, and it's actually completely perfect. So um, I will, probably Christmas Eve, I'm gonna make some really nice cocoa, like hot chocolate. And then, so I need to polish it first and give it a good clean because it's never been used. Well, it's never been used by us, so it's a bit dirty, but that's gonna be polished up. But for now, uh, I'm gonna give this a clean because not that it really matters, but I don't think it looks very nice to to cook a Christmas pudding in that, all the tarnish on it. And I think it might give the pudding a bit of a dodgy flavor, especially because it's gonna be in it for seven hours. But the inside, the, t the tin is in good condition. There's no copper showing through. It needs a good clean. Uh, and apparently the tin, obviously when they first do it, it's really, really shiny, like, like silver. But apparently as it tarnishes the tin and it goes black or dark gray like this, it actually makes it non-stick. So it doesn't look very good, but it's actually a good thing. Right, so I'm gonna give this a polish and I'll show you when it's done. Well, it's, it's better than it was. Thing is, normally when you polish a piece of copper like this, you buff the polish off, but it will have some residue on it. And because this has got to go in a pan with boiling water and be steamed for so long, anything that's left on it, well, you're gonna taste it in the pudding afterwards. So I'm having to make sure it's completely scrubbed off. I took his skin off. Oh, he took the skin off? No, he wants you to peel it for him. What do you want, Ernest? I took his skin off. You want me to take the skin off your apple? Yeah. Do you want me to take the core out as well? Yep. Okay, well, I've got a special tool for that. Got something for everything, haven't we? So I've got, where is it? Don't go in there, there's knives in there, Ernest. Here it is. This is for apples. Yeah. See, it's an apple and the knife is a leaf. Yeah. So what you do is you put it on the top and you push it through and it takes out the middle oh, with yeah. the seeds. So you don't eat the nasty bit in the middle. And then, and then it's got the peeler to take the skin off. Yeah. yeah. Three in one. You're on holiday from school. No school today. Mm. Are you excited for Christmas? Yeah, me too. Oh, Christmas decorations. Yeah, Christmas decorations. What did you do with the little um, bird that I gave you? Is it at home? Oh, bird. You can't keep taking them off the tree, Ernest. There'd be none, there'd be none left. Right, there we go. Take the skin off. Do you want me to cut it up? Or do you want it like that? Like that. Well, just like that, yeah? Okay, there you go. Is that good? There you go. Glad to be of service. Goodbye, Ernest. See you later. <laughs> so cute. Right, well, it hasn't polished the way I wanted it to, but it's definitely a lot cleaner. If I give it a little buff, it might come up a bit shinier. Thing is, it's one of those ones where it's so tarnished that it's gonna take a couple of polishes to get it shiny again, but it's never gonna look like that. Not unless I get Sean to do it. Sean's the expert, but it's clean. Sean is an expert. Sean is like copper, the copper oh, king. Okay. Yeah. If you need something polished, he'll do it for you. Too much talent for Sean. Yep. He's a clever man. It's nearly Christmas. It's In time for a bit of today's, yes. Christmas spirit. <laughs> do you want to try the rum? The demon share. The demon share, yeah. Yeah, I can. We're not going to have the demon share, we're going to have our share. Um, right. Well, I've got two glasses. Do we have ice with it? Do you want it just 
on its own, or do you want it with like Coke, like rum and Coke? No, just rum. Just rum? Yeah. Just okay. a little. With ice? Let me say a sword. A sword of rum. A shot of rum? Yeah. Okay. We'll try without it. Coke, yeah, because well, you lose. Actually, I'll tell you what, maybe we should try it without, because we won't get the real flavour. Mm. And it's good for the it's good for the cold, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Right, there we go. How much is a shot? No. Oh, less, less. Well, I'll have that oh. one. Less for me. But that's like when you have a whiskey, you have like a thanks, thanks, thanks. Just, just that? Yeah, it's enough. Oh, it smells amazing. Yeah, it's not right. strong, like... Should we cheers to the summer solstice? No, summer solstice. <laughs> Winter solstice. I wish it was the summer solstice. The winter solstice. Yes. So, cheers. cheers. Right. Oh, it's okay. It's warm. Yeah. When it gets here, mm. it's nice here, but when it gets to here, it really burns a little <laughs> bit. I feel warm. Can I take off my t-shirt? <laughs> Help yourself, the viewers will enjoy it. That's your Christmas <laughs> present this year. Toro's gonna take his top off. That's nice, actually. I like that. I have to um... definitely want to sip, not not to like not. You don't you don't want that as a as a shot. Oh, that is strong. It's wake up. It's cool. The video is going to be fun after this, isn't it? <laughs> okay, I finish. Fun. One sword. One. Yeah. Shall we? Go on. Appreciate. <laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas! Yeah, you look like to a butcher. Yeah? Butchers don't wear these, <laughs> not anymore. Only axe murderers. Right. So what meat you prefer? Meat? Meat, yeah. Oh, oh no, we make a pudding. We're making a, a pudding. Christmas pudding, no meat. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> you only had one shot. <laughs> <laughs> Right, so the only problem is, I think it's going to be too much for the food mixer. Honestly, I think we'll do it the old fashioned way. This is time to do it like the Victorians did. And here we have a very large mason bowl. Oh, it could be perfect for my breakfast. Your breakfast? Yeah, a bowl. You eat that much, would you? Mm, yeah, I eat, I eat a lot at breakfast. Main, well, main menu. I tell you what, you can't get in France. I mean, it's not something you would eat every day. But you know, I think they still sell. I think they still sell them in the states. Lucky Charms. Have you ever had Lucky Charms? Lucky. Lucky Charms. It's like cereal, but yeah. with little pieces of like marshmallow candy in it. Oh, oh my god. At the breakfast. No, it's not really a breakfast, is it? It's too much sugar in it. It's not healthy, but it's probably nice as a treat sometime. But we, they used to sell them in the UK when I was a child, Lucky Charms, and now they don't sell them. I think they banned them in Europe, actually. Right, so, thanks for your phone, Florian. So we need, I've already weighed these out last night, 120 grams of um, sultanas, 120 grams of currants, 120 grams of raisins. I've doubled this because this is really big. And if there's any mixture left over, I'll make a small one and I'll keep it for next year. Suet. Do I even have half this stuff? Breadcrumbs, stout. I think we can find some beer somewhere. It says you have to put beer. 150 ml of beer. Flour, six grams. Rum, crystallized ginger. Don't have that. Put a bit of fresh ginger in it. Brandy, prunes. I don't have prunes either, but I'm gonna replace the prunes maybe with some dried cranberries. Madeira, don't have that. We'll just put extra brandy. Ground almonds, I've got that. Sherry, mum. <laughs> My mum's called Sherry, um, but they, they want the drink here. Eggs, one large egg, milk, salt, pinch of poppy seeds. Don't have those either. We're just gonna, we're just gonna wing it. We'll just use what we have and see what we've got. So uh, first of all, I need brown sugar. Uh, I do have in here some Muscovado brown sugar, which is cane sugar that's basically not refined. It's all full of molasses. So we're gonna use that. Oranges, we have oranges. Lemon, I had lemons, but they went off. So we won't use, mixed peel, okay. They mean candied peel. I think I've got some actually. Oh, look, it's a jar of Fortnum and Mason mince meat. Italian mixed peel. Glacé cherries, we don't need that. 
Oh, maybe we can put some glasso cherries in it. Italian mixed peel. We're also going to need mixed spice. I've got a big jar of mixed spice there. Suet. Sorry. Uh, do I have suet? Probably. Probably right at the back because it's something I never use. But I'm one of these people I like to have things just in case. What is suet? Suet, well, I think it's the fat from a cow. It doesn't sound very nice, but you use it a lot in puddings. Suet, where would it be? Oh dear. Hello. 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 You're right. Sorry. Not me. Did he leave a cup here? He left lots of cups, I uh, think. Oh yeah, no, it's just that one. Oh, that one, on yeah. The left. Oh, I found. What you found? Well, I found a Christmas pudding. So I don't know why we're bothering. A St. James Christmas pudding from Fortnum and Mason from last year. Well, if this goes horribly wrong, we'll use this as a backup because it doesn't go off till June next year. The thing is, I think these never go off. But what I've got here, I've just found, is a bag of dried cranberries. So we can use those in it instead of the food. What's it called? Sweef. Sweef. Yeah, S U I F. It's similar to suet. Yeah. Yeah, Swift and suet. It's a similar. Ah, suet. Ah. ah, this is a classic British, the original Atora shredded beef suet. How many grams? 200 grams, and how much do we need? See, it's all in the cupboards. Just gotta find it. So I need 120 grams of suet, but I'm doubling it. So I need 240 grams of suet and I've only got 200 grams. But I think I could make up the rest with some beef dripping, which is also beef fat uh, from England actually. So I'll use 40 grams of that and 200 grams of that. I think that'll be all right. What is it, Britannia? Britannia? Uh, no, it's, it's, beef, it's beef fat. Uh, Gras de boeuf. Gras okay. de boeuf. Okay. Boeuf? Mm. Oh, boeuf. 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 Sorry, my accent in French is no, terrible. It's cool. I know the words, but the accent's terrible. Boeuf. Um, Gras de boeuf. Okay, so beef fat. Um, shredded beef suet, yep. So we've got that and that. Cranberries. Got loads of cranberries. Do you know what I'm going to make, actually? Let's get rid of that. <laughs> Doesn't look very appetizing. A moldy orange. Because I love turkey with cranberry sauce. But I think cranberry sauce is really sweet. It's like a confiture, like a jam. Mm. But what I love is cranberry chutney, which is a bit more savory. It's got some sort of, it's like a bit more vinegary and stuff. So I think I might make cranberry chutney to have with the turkey, um, which is a bit of a, uh, sort of shaking up the uh, traditions of the old cranberry sauce, but fresh ginger. Jean -jean. Here we go. Let's put the hamper under the tree so it's easier to get. Okay, so it said zest, so I'm just going to peel the zest off and chop it with the machine. Wow. I think that might be easier. You are cutting your no orange. A what? You are cutting your no orange. You know, I don't know how interesting this is as far as content goes. <laughs> I think it might just say cut. Cut, cut, and then we'll just show you. Ah, it's all done now. Recipes in the description. If you want to make it yourself, get on with it. <laughs> and we can just keep the funny parts. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We are funny boys. We're funny boys, yeah. So, right, that is the zest from an orange, and that is the zest from a lemon. Thing is, Florian, if you film everything, I'm going to be editing this until midnight tonight. So, it's probably best if we just film the best bits from now on. It's cool, this. You, you, you find this interesting? Yeah, it is. Well, if you find it interesting, I'm sure nobody else will. What do you think about the, my uh, music, Michael? Solstice. Solstice? Solstice song. I like it. <laughs> Love it. You don't like? <laughs> yeah, it's cool. Very French. Yeah? We can see love the song. Huh? We can see that you love the song. Well, I'm just trying to get... There we go. Yeah. So just as we see the winter solstice, you'll observe that the sun is behind a cloud. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Couldn't have timed it any better. 
So that right now is the furthest the sun will be from the northern hemisphere until next year. From this point onwards, we're going to get slowly closer and closer to the sun in the north and summer is on its way back. Oh. So I will say goodbye. Okay. It's a pagan custom to say goodbye to Sam, the old year. Come back. To say goodbye to the past. The sun's coming back. Okay. Doesn't mean uh, it's going to warm up straight away though. And we want to come back fast. Yeah, come back fast, please. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. There it is. It's nice at the uh, camera. So I'll uh, say happy Yuletide, everyone. Thank you, Michael, for all this knowledge. <laughs> I learned for something. For, all the, for the knowledge? The knowledge, yes. The solstice. I didn't the solstice. know this. You didn't know what the solstice is? Yeah, but I... So when you said me this, I, I looked on, on Solstice the internet, means yes. sun, still, still sun. It means yeah. it stops. Maybe we can go inside. Yeah, let's go inside, <laughs> it's cold. Very, very cold. Oh, not you? No, I'm not too cold. Oh. It's because you, you have uh, your butcher cap. My butcher apron is keeping me warm. See? Protect, protects you. <laughs> Hope that I can find a tin that it's going to fit in. A pan. It's got to go in a pan and steam. Well, you can see that's not going to fit. I need a taller pan. Oh, I have a taller pan. A pan that I haven't used since last year. But will it fit in the oven? One, you need help? No. Oh, it's heavy. It's a bit dusty, the lid, but yeah. Yeah, it'll fit in the oven, but not with the lid. And if you cut the pan a little? <laughs> cut the pan, yeah, I'll just cut the top off. <laughs> Maybe I can put it that way. Will it fit that way? Yeah, it, it, it'll work. I'll just put, just put the lid upside down. Yeah, it does go, but the lid has, lid has to go up. Unless I put a plate on top. There you go. Put a plate on top. That will keep the steam in. Okay, Florian has left. So I'm going to finish it by myself. Basically what I've done is I got the copper mold. I've lined it with loads of butter because there's lots of nooks and crannies and corners. I don't want it to stick. If it's stuck to this and it didn't come out in one piece, that would be a tragedy. The mixture is done. Doesn't look very appetizing at the minute. So basically I didn't have any breadcrumbs. I couldn't find any dry breadcrumbs. So what I did was I thought, well, bread crumbs are dried bread, which is basically just flour with no water in it anymore. So I just used some bread flour at, um, to the same weight of breadcrumbs that I was meant to use. So uh, I think that'll be fine. It looks about the right consistency. So all I need to do now is uh, put this into here. You're meant to fill it two thirds the height. Well, luckily this thing's split into thirds anyway, so you've got one, two, three. So I think we should fill it to about here because it will rise. Uh, I've got a copper pan here, uh, big enough to take it. Uh, and I'm, I've got water in there, which is coming to the boil now. So I'll fill the, um, the mold up and then place it into steam. And then it can go into the simmering oven at the bottom to steam for about six to seven hours, a long, long time. So you won't see it finished today, but you will see it um, tomorrow and you'll definitely see it on Christmas Day when we eat it so now I must say that was extremely lucky because the amount of ingredients that I made which was double the recipe has filled exactly two-thirds of this mold um, so what I'm going to do now is I've got this little circle of it looks a bit tatty but it's called Baco Glide it's a, like a sort of silicon um, non-stick grease proof um, reusable um, paper so we're just going to put that on top, make sure it's completely flat. And over that, we're going to add a damp tea towel. Right, so there you go. We have our damp piece of linen tied over the top with some string. It's got a fold in the top and I've pushed it down just slightly so that it's got uh, room to push upwards. Uh, it's all tied up nicely. So now I need to lower it. Uh, actually, I've done something wrong. But what you're also meant to do is tie another set of string around the bottom, like so. Put that one there so it's in the center. Uh, like that, so that, or when it's time to get it out of the pan, because it's gonna be very hot, you need to be able to lift it up. So you now have a little cradle to lift it up with. So now I'm going to, I've got my pan. It seems to be boiling nicely. I will top it up momentarily. 
but I'm going to now lower in the Christmas pudding. Uh, and because it's got such a tiny little base, um, it's not going to stay on the boiling plate forever. It's going to go in the simmering oven. The bottom won't actually burn. And because it's copper, um, the heat will dissipate um, up the sides of the jelly mold um, and not burn the bottom. So let's put the lid on for now. Um, we'll leave that for about half an hour to heat up and then I'll pop the lid upside down and it can go in the simmering oven. So in tomorrow's video, you're going to see the Christmas pudding come out of the steamer because I'll film that tonight when it's ready to come out. Got lots more um, food prep to do ready for Christmas day. Probably a bit more decorating in the cottage. We do have a bit of a garland at the minute, but it's not enough. So I just want to say thanks for watching and I'll see you tomorrow for another Christmas video. Thanks a lot.